Hello everyone, it's Madeline, also known as Knitting House Square on Instagram and Knitting House SQ on Ravelry. And today I thought I'd try a little bit of a different video. I'm going to be doing a yarn review. And the yarn this week will be Veil, vale, the new yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. So this yarn was released on Wednesday, and here is the color that I picked. This is, I want to say it's called Vernal. There's the little name. And it retails for $13.75. And how many yards? It's lace weight, and you get 450 yards. Um, so yes, my color is, it's like a pale, pale green. I thought it was really pretty. And so I thought I'd just start off. Here's kind of the structure of what I was thinking. Um, first, I'd, I was, I'm going to show you where this one fits in the Brooklyn Tweed yarn line because I own most of the bases from Brooklyn Tweed. Then I was going to knit up the swatch, or a swatch of it. And finally, I was going to knit the gully pattern and then let everyone know what I thought. So until June 30th, when you buy a skein of this yarn, you get a free Brooklyn Tweed pattern with it. And it's a really pretty cowl here. I believe it's brioche, yeah, a lace weight brioche cowl. And you only need the one skein to make it, so perfect project to try it out with. So I'm going to knit one of these and see how I like the yarn. And then let everyone know. So, starting off, where do I think this one fits into the Brooklyn Tweed yarn line? Um, so here are, I would probably say, the, the three most popular plus the veil on the end here. So starting off with, I don't own Quarry, the bulky weight yarn, so I'm just going to start off with Shelter. This one's Shelter, and this is a much more, it's more rustic. Uh, then we have Arbor, um, which is fun the most similarly to the Veil. Vale. And then we have Loft, which is the fingering weight yarn, and this one is... This is the postcard colorway. I really like this one. It has little speckles of pink in it, so when you wash it, um, I think your whole work like turns a little bit pink, which I really like. I think that's kind of fun. And then finally we have Veil, vale, which is the new lace weight yarn. So, um, kind of in like the Brooklyn Tweed family, these two are the most similar, and then these two are similar. So I'd say you can group them like this. So now one thing that a lot of people talk about with Brooklyn Tweed is kind of how fragile the yarn is. So comparing, I'll just do a comparison with Veil vale and, or actually I'll pick the most similar. So I'll do Veil vale versus Loft. And so Veil, vale, I'll try and do a zoom in of this, is actually really quite springy. And I'll just try and pull on it, see how much effort it takes to break it. It's actually pretty slight, pretty, it's not too easy to break. Um, it has quite a bit of stretch in it. It almost feels like there's, feels like there's nylon, but there is no nylon. And then compared to, this one is Loft. Loft just has the really bright edge when you break it. Um, I would actually say Loft is pretty strong. But definitely the Veil and Arbor are the strongest in terms of how hard they are to break the yarn. Um, I've actually found with Arbor, it takes a, quite a bit of effort. <laughs> uh, but Veil, vale, of course, it's it's much thinner yarn, so it's a little easier to break. So, I would say it's actually, for anyone concerned that it will break easily, would not be worried about it. So yes, so next up, I will knit up the swatch, so I'll be back in a little bit with that. Hello everyone, so I'm back again after a little while. It's been about a week and a half since I filmed the first clip about what I thought my initial thoughts on the yarn. Um, so first I'll start talking about the swatch, and then I ended up knitting the full gully pattern. So I'll show, here's just the picture of the pattern. So I'll show that off and talk about maybe couple of tips I have for anyone else who's planning on knitting it and what I thought of the pattern. So starting off, this was my swatch from the Veil vale yarn. And 
I knit mine on the recommended size. I used, um, I think it was a US 4. Yes, so I knit this one on a US 4. And then I didn't actually block this one as aggressively as I think I was supposed to in the pattern. I just hung it up to dry, like folded in half and hung it up. Or not folded in half, but laid it over something. And let it dry that way. And then when I measured it, I noticed it wasn't quite the right dimension width wise. So I actually ended up going all the way up to a size five. Yeah, so this was the four. And then this is, I finally got a color picture of the pattern, but this is the Gully Cow. And you get this free when you buy one skein of the yarn. And here's almost a better picture of it here. But I'll definitely link the pattern down below to the Ravelry page. And so it took me about a week to knit overall. And here is my finished product. I think it turned out really nice. So again, this was on, I went up a needle size. I did really enjoy knitting with the yarn. I think it is great stitch definition. It was a little tricky to fix any mistakes though in the fingering, or not fingering weight, lace weight yarn, especially because if you had to go back in like an increase or decrease stitch and you dropped one of the lace weight stitches, <laughs> it, was, it was difficult to pick it back up again. But I guess that's, that could just be a common thing with all brioche knitting. I've only ever done a couple projects in brioche. So, yes. I would say this is a good project if you maybe knit like just regular straight brioche before. Um, and then this could be a nice like second project because it is, there are some trickier things. The cast on, I had to cast it on a couple of times before I got the edge the way I wanted it to look. And yes. So here it is. I did block this to the exact dimensions given in the pattern. And and it was when I was blocking it that I was very glad that I went up a needle size because I'll insert a picture here. Yeah, so in that picture you can see just how tight I had to I had to really pull this. And also, another thing about cast on and cast off. So you kind of have two options casting off the top edge. So in the first portion, I counted, and this is more just a tip for anyone who's gonna knit the pattern later on. Um, I'm gonna try and not reveal any of the details of the pattern, but I counted when I was doing the cast off suggest that was suggested, I counted the yarn overs as separate stitches from the knit stitches. So I did half of it that way. Um, and then for the second half, I was like, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing that. I should try it the other way. So this section, you'll see this cast off edge is a lot tighter. This one I was counting the knit stitch and the yarn over as one stitch in my bind off. So yeah, here's, so here's counting them together. And then this looser edge over here is doing the yarn over as a separate stitch. So it's much easier to block this portion just because it is really stretchier. But I almost think this side looks cleaner, but it doesn't stretch as much. So that's just something to think about when you're casting off this pattern. I also, when I was first starting to knit this, my pattern got, <laughs> I probably shouldn't admit this, but my patterning got a little bit messed up. I don't think you really notice it all at all though, so I don't mind. Um, but right down in here, you'll see I have this extra little swirl going on. So that, that little bit is not supposed to be there. <laughs> but that's all right. It's on the back. Plus, I'll probably give this as a gift. I feel like it would make a great present for someone. So, let me just put it on real quick so everyone can see what it looks like. So yeah, I think it fits really well. 
It's very light and nice. I feel like it, it's light, but it'll still be really warm. And I do like the drape a lot. So yeah. It would also be kind of fun maybe to double it and see if you could get it to wrap around twice. Because that would probably be really pretty at all. But this way it really shows off the stitch definition. So yes. Let me just check real quick to make sure there wasn't anything else. The last thing I'll probably mention, or two last things I'll mention about this one, is that I did knit this pattern the same way I usually knit, well, most cable patterns, but so the way I do it is I make, first I read through the pattern and then I make an Excel spreadsheet with the different number of row counts that I need for each section of the pattern. And then I have a little box for every row, or in this case it's brioche, so every two rows. And then as I go through, I just cross off all the boxes just to make sure that <laughs> I'm not double counting any rows and that it all works out. And then the last thing is, is that I think this is a great pattern. I would definitely do it again. I'm thinking about maybe a red one. I'm, I have to check the yarn colors that they have available one again before I finally decide. But I feel like that's just so great that you can get a whole one of these. And this is how much yarn I have left over. There's still a bunch. So if you got like two things of this, you could definitely make three of these, which that's a great deal yarn wise. <laughs> so yes, I would definitely recommend Veil. I probably would rank it as definitely in my top favorite Brooklyn Tweed yarns. It's hard to pick one favorite though, because I haven't knit a full project out of Arbor yet. So I feel like I have to wait for that before I can really make my decision. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and if you have any other yarns you'd like to see me give my thoughts on or knit a little project out of, let me know, and have a great week. Bye!